hello and welcome again to our daily Africa Cup of Nations show on France 24. Well, with the quarterfinals all done and dusted, the players get to take a rest day. So no matches until Wednesday's semifinals. But there's no break from the action here in the studio as I'm joined by the indomitable journalist from Eurosport, Ruben Slachter. Thanks again for coming, Ruben. Yeah, thank you very much. It's no, it's a rest day, but it's deadline day, so there's lots to talk about in the end. So it's much action, so much action. And, uh, well, we'll be going over all those quarterfinal results as well as other breaking news from the world of African football. Just in case you needed any reminder of what happened over the last two days... Hosts Cameroon kick things off with a processionary 2-0 win with Gambia when uh, Carl Toko Ekambi was the hero scoring both goals. Burkina Faso followed in their wake, the Stallions pulling off a surprise 1-0 victory over Tunisia to book their place in the last wall thanks to Dango Ouattara's strike on the stroke of halftime. In Sunday's late game, Senegal turned on the afterburners to dispatch of a spirited Equatorial Guinea 3-1 with Famara Diedu, Cheku Kuyate and Ismaila Shah on the score sheet for the Lions of Tengara. And that was after the pharaohs of Egypt had claimed the serious scalp of Morocco with Mohamed Salah scoring and assisting in a 2-1 win in extra time. Uh, in the late game, well, for the Egyptian king, the beauty of the AFCON is that anyone can beat anyone. So let's take a listen to what he said following the games. Well, I think, uh, I think it's tough for everyone. Like you see, Algeria lost in the group stage, which they won it last time. They had a great team and they lost. Uh, Senegal just qualified with, uh, in a group with one goal. So, I mean, I'm not saying something bad about them. I'm just saying the tournament is tough. For everyone, uh, it was tough in, for us in the beginning until we just adapt. Um, I think in Nigeria, after they being the best team in a group stage, they lost. So you never know in any game. Uh, so now it's time to focus against uh, Cameroon. <laughs> um, and yeah, we go from there. I think the players give everything today. The players give everything each game. And hopefully we, we just carry on and winning. Ruben Salah's there, uh, he's just basically describing that anyone can beat anyone and we have seen that, but surely there are some teams now we can look to as having emerged, possibly the cream of the crop. Who stood out for you in those quarters? In the quarters it was Senegal. Then I'm only talking about the quarters because before it wasn't impressive. It also seems that Senegal was already saving a little bit of energy with all those matches playing in the heat in the afternoon. Now finally they played in the evening and they showed us a real good performance. So. For me, those were the, uh, that was the most imp impressive performance. Cameroon also, without ma making a mistake against the Gambia, but it's a little bit the same story for both of the teams. Well, because um, both Cameroon and Senegal only played against teams, only played matches they had to win. And now the matches are coming where, yeah, it's, uh, the, it's, it's crunch time at the end. It's cl those clutch matches. So we'll see if they will be up for the tasks. The interesting thing about Egypt, though, is that they already eliminated two heavyweights in African football, of African football. So, yeah, it's uh, if you only talk about the quarterfinals, I would say Senegal. But as Mohamed Salah said, and who am I to contradict uh, best play in the tournament? Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's all open. That's, I mean, it's going to be a fascinating uh, last four matchup. So, once again, if we needed any reminder... Some mouth-watering games to look forward to as Burkina Faso and Senegal both hope to take one step closer towards their first ever AFCON titles when they meet on Wednesday at the Amadou Ahijo Stadium. And then on Thursday, the two teams with the most titles between them, Cameroon with five and Egypt with seven, go head-to-head -head at the Olembe Stadium, opened again following the tragic stampede outside the stadium last Monday. Well, taking a look back at one of the standout moments of the tournament, Rwandan referee Salima Mukansanga made AFCON history when she became the first female ref in the 65-year history of the competition to officiate a game. France 24 sports reporter James Vecina sat down with Salima to discover what it means to be a pioneer for women on Africa's biggest footballing stage. This is well worth a listen. Salima Mukasanga, thank you very much for taking the time to sit down with us today. Uh, now, this edition of the Africa Cup of Nations has been special for so many reasons, uh, but one of those reasons is that you became the first female referee to oversee a game. When you found out that you were going to referee that game between Zimbabwe and Guinea, how did you feel? Thank you so much. I was really excited because I started being a fourth official for the two games 
And then when I got an appointment to officiate, then I say, okay, now this is my time, this is the chance I get, this is the moment. So I'm going to deliver, I'm going to show that I'm ready and I'm capable. I'm going to show the world that uh, even a woman can be dominating, can be a referee in men's game. So from that moment, I was really excited and uh, just uh, scared. So once you got onto the pitch, though, uh, what was that experience like for you? The first step I made in, into the field, I feel the atmosphere. And then I saw the cloud and I saw the teams and they have been really respecting me. I saw people have been trusting me and then I said, let me push away that fear and then make it possible. So from that moment, I start to say, I'm going to officiate like me, like Salma, like a woman. So I'm going to do it. And then I know player, they will trust me because they have trust in me and then calf trust me. So I have to trust myself and trust my colleagues. We are going to make it. Yeah, so that fear disappear. And what will you take back? What will you remember from that game? And that is a very big experience I get because from the first whistle, automatically because it's not the first game I did in my career so I forget everything I forget about Afghan I forget about um, uh, woman I forget everything so I was uh, in the mood of referring with that experience it makes me feel oh yeah they are right they are right and myself I feel confidence and uh, ready and then let me show them that I'm with them and then I can deliver yeah Lots of people would have seen you for the first time. Maybe just tell us a little bit about how you became a referee. What was it that made you want to become uh, an official? I used to watch football. I didn't play at a professional level football, no. I was playing basketball. So when I go with my family to watch the game, I saw people, they have been, they are playing. I saw referees and then I was uh, really excited. All those people, they can take decisions, they can change everything. They saw, and the players, they are respecting them. All staff, I mean coaches and uh, people around, they are respecting them. I said, why? Why not me becoming such people? So we've watched you train uh, alongside the other male referees and the training is exactly the same. Yeah, same, same training. Because the objective of the training is to work hard to meet the demand of the game, the demand of men's game. So that demand, I have to prepare it, I have to work for it, I have to push for it, yeah. Do you feel that enough is done with regards to understanding the biological uh, sides and, for example, uh, women who might want to become pregnant? Is there enough consideration taken into account? There is uh, some moment you have to stop. It's part of uh, a life getting birth, pregnancy, and then uh, period, all this is part of life. And uh, we are not experiencing the same when we are in these stages. So this moment, women, they need support. They need support. Some country, they are removing them from the list because they think they will not come back. You've clearly become an ambassador now for any uh, women who might want to become a referee or become more involved uh, in any sports. How does this make you feel? How do you feel about taking on this role? This is an honour. It's a privilege. I'm going to encourage young women, especially young women. They're now looking at me, please wake up and then work hard. This is the moment. Today it's Salma, maybe tomorrow is going to be someone else. We are here to work hard to show men, hey, you know guys, we, are, we can deliver, we can be on the level you, you are. We can go inside the field of play and take decision and run according to our pace. You know, we can't run like men, we can't sprint like men, but we can, we can show them that even if we are, we are women, we can be on the level of officiating a game, taking decision, and being where we have to be at the same time and then take decision and be in a proper moment and then understanding what football needs and the demand of the game, yeah. Well, you've already achieved so much, uh, but do you have other things in mind? Any further goals? Yeah. I did not achieve because this is just the beginning. I have been opening the door to the rest of women all over the world, especially in Africa. 
So it means I have to keep working. I saw you and asked me about World Cup men. This is a dream every man has. Why not women? Me too, I have that dream. But my focus is not that dream. My focus is just to finish with, uh, start with, uh, focus and uh, deliver and perform with men's, women's World Cup. That's my dream. So men's World Cup, inshallah. If I'm ready, capable, they will, they will give me that chance. Yeah, but first I have to focus on the women World Cup. Salima Mukasanga, thank you very much for taking the time to sit down with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, what a fascinating insight from Salima. We can't wait to see where she takes the women's game for referees. Well, some news regarding African players now who are moving clubs. Of course, today is transfer deadline day across the top five leagues in Europe with some significant changes for African players, including big names like goalkeeper Andre Onano of Cameroon agreeing to go from Inter Milan to Ajax. Cote d'Ivoire forward Jeremy Boga transferring to Atlanta for 22 million euros. Amad Diallo moving from Manchester United to Rangers on loan and already scoring on debut. And we also can't look past Nigerian goalkeeper Maduka Okoye arriving at English Premier League team Watford for just over 6 million euros. While Ghana forward Calvin Yeboa has made the move to Genoa for just over 7 million euros. But Ruben, the standout name on that list, uh, I think is has to be said, is, is Pierre-Omerc Aubameyang moving from Arsenal to Barcelona. Of course, he didn't play in the AFCON for Gabon. Uh, it was cited that he had some medical conditions. He went back to England uh, and now is making possibly the transfer to Barcelona. A very interesting time to do so. Yeah, it's it's from all points of view, it's a really interesting transfer. I mean, we, we've we had all those uh, stories about him during this tournament, but also already before at Arsenal, where they didn't want him anymore. Now he went today, he went to Barcelona, where first he wasn't accepted, and now at the end he's still signing a contract, it seems, because it's never really sure with Obama Young, but let's say that he will go there. So yeah, the, it's, it's interesting for Obama Young, because we don't know how he is doing and if he is good enough to play for Barcelona right now. It's interesting because Arsenal are just losing a striker and not buying anyone back. And it's also interesting for Barcelona because this is not a real Barcelona player. It's a player who needs a lot of space and Barcelona, in it was in at least with Xavi as a manager, it's all about uh, possession and, and a lot of uh, technical and, and, and combinations and stuff. And I don't say that he is not a technical player, Obama Young, but he needs m some more space. So, yeah, it's, it's really interesting how this will turn out. And, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to what will happen. Well, of course, Gabon could have really used his exploits against Burkina Faso there. But um, talking about the transfers, is there anyone else who has caught your eye? And possibly anyone else who maybe after this AFCON tournament has shown their, their promise and could be looking to a major move in the European leagues? Well, the, the transfer we already saw was Yusuf Belayli going to, to Brest. Uh, that's really interesting because he is a, such a big name in Algeria, but never played in Europe. And now he's coming to France. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's a real tournament player. We've seen him doing so well for his national team. And now we want to see if he's consistent enough to do it for a whole season or at least for six months now in, in, in France. So that's really interesting because, yeah, he's such a big name for the African football. So that, that would be... Interesting to follow. And for the players we've, we've seen during this tournament, well, we see some images there from uh, Babu Kage, the, the goalkeeper of the Gambia. And also we had Mohamed Kamara for Sierra Leone. Those stories were in, incredible. Kamara still playing in, in Sierra Leone. Uh, Gay is now still the goalkeeper in the, in the lower leagues in Germany. Uh, they seem to be happy in the clubs where they are, but it would have been also a lot of fun to just have some deadline day crazy transfer with one of those involved. And then there is, we also see him now, Colin Svay. Uh, and also we saw yesterday uh, Salio Sis for, for Senegal, Colin Svay for, um, for Cameroon, of course, who are those yeah, uh, modern wingbacks where there's a lot of demand in, in, in modern football for those players because they are, they are having uh, pace, they are ha also uh, providing a lot of assists. Uh, Salio Sis, I have to admit that it is more based on the match we saw yesterday, but um, you had, um, uh, how do you say, the um, combination and, and the, um, the connection he has with Sadio Mane is really interesting. So I think that those two players, and uh, Salius, for example, is still playing in the second French league, 
could be also yeah some of those surprising names who come out of this tournament but okay there's still two matches to go so they have uh, time to uh, to uh, to show them uh, again to the world well, I have to say, Ruben was a waxing absolute lyric about Salih Cisse last night. <laughs> uh, it will be seen if, uh, as he says, more players can uh, show what they are made of and uh, possibly make those transfers in the summer. Well, that concludes the show. Thanks once again, Ruben, for your amazing insights. Uh, thank you for watching. We'll be bringing you a preview of those mouth-watering semi-final clashes from Paris and Yaoundé tomorrow, same time. Until then, stay tuned for more news on France 24.